The content of tonight's program addresses an unusual topic which may be considered controversial and explicit. Parental discretion is advised. These jurors, and you at home, will weigh the evidence presented to you in a dramatic reenactment of an actual court trial. Judge Paul Howard presiding. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? That cop tried to kill me! You'll retire and begin your deliberations. And decide for yourself whether you think the defendant is guilty or innocent. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Guilty or Innocent, the show where good judgment pays. And now, here's our jury moderator, John Sheeran. Hello, and welcome to Guilty or Innocent. I'm John Sheeran, your jury moderator. These jurors, and those of you at home, will weigh the evidence presented to you in a dramatic reenactment of an actual trial case. Those jurors whose verdict agrees with the original jury in this case will share $5,000 and earn the right to appear on our next program for up to five consecutive programs. If the verdict is unanimous and correct, they will share $10,000. Next, we'll see our dramatic recreation of the trial. But first, these few words of legal wisdom from our host, the eminent trial attorney, Mr. Melvin Belli. With the least amount of pressure, this gun is set to fire. If this wire was attached to a door with the slightest pull, one would be met with a charge of shotgun buckshot. Donald May lived in fear and employed this implement of destruction as his watchdog. Was he a law-abiding citizen or a menace to his neighborhood? Well, it's time for the jury contestants, as well as you viewers at home, to watch this reenactment and decide for yourself whether you think the defendant is guilty or innocent. Today's case on Guilty or Innocent, I only wanted to scare them. As we enter the courtroom, defendant Donald May has been charged with assault with a deadly weapon with intent to commit murder. Mr. May rigged a shotgun with a wire to the trigger, which discharged into the face of a juvenile attempting to enter the defendant's garage. A spring-loaded shotgun suspended from above, like this? Yes, sir. Pointed at the door? That's right, sir. Would you say then, officer, that the gun suspended in Mr. May's garage was angled just right in order to strike a young boy in the face? Objection, Your Honor! This court will come to order! What you're telling us, Officer Giles, is that the gun was not angled into the air so that it might only warn off those intruders. Objection, Your Honor. The prosecution asked a leading question. Sustained. Officer Giles, could someone from outside the garage have known that Mr. May rigged this shotgun to the door? Absolutely not. Nothing further, Your Honor. Mr. Horn? Officer Giles, isn't it true that Donald May called your precinct on numerous occasions pleading with you to apprehend the persons who robbed his house and who were responsible for committing a whole rash of burglaries in his neighborhood. Yes, he did. And which specific suspects did he mention? Chris and Billy Todd. Uh -huh. And how did you respond? Well, we told him that we lacked sufficient evidence to apprehend these boys. No, in short, you refused to help him. You put Mr. May in the desperate position of trying to to defend his own family, his own way. No, counsel. I've told you no that we just lack No further What happened then, Billy? What happened once you got to the garage? I started to open the garage door. It was unlocked. 
Then I heard an explosion. Billy, why do you carry a cane now? You ever seen anybody walk who's had half their face blown away with buckshot? It's a riot. Chris, you and your brother are very well known to the police, aren't you? What do you mean? Well, I mean, isn't it true that you and your brother are well known to have sold drugs and angel dust to the students at school? Oh, no, we never did that. That whole report was just a frame-up. And isn't it also true that... It was just one some big of the lousy students lie. ...to pay for their drug connection, that you and your brother threatened them with... I said they're all a bunch of liars. And isn't it true that you and your brother also have expensive drug habits of your own? Come on, that's a crock. You and your brother broke into Donald May's garage to rob him. <laughs> Objection! That's all. Mr. Gonzalez, how long have you lived next door to Mr. May? Mr. May, I, my family moved in about the same time as him. I'd say about 10 years. Mr. Gonzalez, how many times during the day do you pass in front of Mr. May's house? Mr. May's house? Uh, I'd say at least twice. That is, coming to and, and leaving, going to school and work. Well, one last question, Mr. Gonzalez. Does this sign look familiar to you? Yes, sir. That's a sign that's in front of Mr. May's garage. We call the defendant, Donald May, to the stand, please. Besides the night in question, Mr. May, has your house ever been burglarized? It sure has. About a month before that, they busted right through the window. They stripped the valuable chrome off my Model T, and they stole some bullets I had laying around. And how did the police respond? The police said that they couldn't find no fingerprints, so they couldn't arrest anybody. It was a real slick job. Did you then take any steps to safeguard your garage? Oh, yeah, I put some iron bars on the window. Two weeks later, I find the garage doors bent. They tried to jimmy it with a crowbar. Are you trying to tell us that this is what compelled you to install a gun? No, sir. Well, then, why did a break-in frighten you so much? I was afraid for my family. A couple of months ago, my neighbor was killed in his sleep, and his house was robbed. They'd been in there two weeks before that, too. I mean, you read about this stuff in the papers every day. But... Well, some punk knifed him in his own bedroom. Well, I didn't want to be next, and that's why I had to put that gun in there to protect my family. I mean, you got wild animals running loose in the street here. Tell me about this sign, Mr. May. Well, that thing, that's what I hung on my garage when I put the gun up. But somebody kept knocking it down. Your witness. Mr. May, where were you that night at the exact moment Billy Todd was shot? I was upstairs in my bedroom, asleep. Is there a door leading from the garage to the rest of the house? Yeah. Then if you were so concerned about the protection of your family, why didn't you rig up that gun behind the second door? Hey, I didn't want to mess it with my stuff, neither. I suggest, Mr. May, that rather than be concerned with the protection of your family, you were more concerned with the protection of your property and punishing those who had outsmarted you in the past by killing them. Hey, I told Objection, you I had to protect Honor. my family. The prosecutor is not going to do nothing. Order order what am I supposed to do? Wait around and get my throat cut Mr. by a couple May, lousy sir. peddlers? I have no further questions. Well, I didn't kill nobody. Ladies and gentlemen, a hungry beast looms over our whole society now. It is the obsession with material goods, and it breeds suspicion. We feed that beast and help it grow. Billy and Chris Todd posed no threat of violence to Mr. May, Yet, had he been in his garage with a gun in his hand, he would not have been justified in firing that gun. I ask you to return a verdict of guilty. Donald May feared for the safety of his family, and he was trying to protect their lives. Donald May knew of violence in his own neighborhood. Homicide, even, right next door, and he knew that violence was spreading in his neighborhood like a cancer. Oh, he went to the authorities repeatedly, but the authorities lamely told him that their hands were tied. Well, since his home had been broken into already, Donald May had no choice but to protect his loved ones himself.
In fact, he repeatedly went to the trouble of providing fair warning to anybody with the nerve to break into his property. And I implore you to find Donald May not guilty. Donald May has been charged with assault with a deadly weapon with intent to commit murder. If you determine that he was not threatened with immediate violence by the Todds, then you must find him guilty as charged. However, if you determine that he acted in a reasonable and justifiable manner in protecting his family, you must find him not guilty. The jury may now retire to its chambers.